Greetings, Series 24, Series 57 test takers. This is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, we are going to do a little bit of a carve out on limit order protection for 24 and uh, 57. We have a full narrative lecture, Hour Giver Plus, on uh, market making. But what I like to do in these uh, some of these test subject areas is do a little carve out. That's what we do on limit order protection. So besides smashing the like button, if you found it uh, a value, also let me know if you want me to do something similar. The obvious next one to do would be uh, locked and cross markets. All right, so let's get started on uh, limit order protection. All right, so XYZ is an over-the-counter stock. It trades on NASDAQ, the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation System. I've uh, taken the liberty here of using Merrill Lynch, MLCO, is the market participant ID, MPID, for uh, Merrill Lynch. And the reason I chose Merrill Lynch is Merrill Lynch has both market-making operations as well as retail customers. Some market makers do not. And like Citadel and some do, like Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley. This could very easily be MSCO, it could be um, UBS, whatever the case may be. And uh, market makers buy at their bid and they sell at their ass. So if you're a Series 24 and uh, you know, you've know you been 15 years with your Series 7 doing packaged products, this could be a challenge to get the quote right and from whose perspective the quote is inside looking out. And so as the Series 57 of Merrill Lynch, I'm gonna put in a quote here and maybe I put in 15, 16, I have a two-sided quote, and then I have to be obligated for at least 100 shares on either side. Let's say I'm good for 10 round lots on my bid and 10 round lots on my ask. So I'm quoting a 15, 16, 10 by 10, and pretty straightforward here if it's a market order. you know. So let me just get out my annotation tool. And I made a little note here, and I think this is what people get hung up. I mean, if the customer just gives me a, market order to sell, that is pretty straightforward here. You know, the customer sells, I buy it into my inventory at 15, and with a market over, market order, the customer, if he wants to buy, be on that. That's what I mean here in this note that I've made, that the current, whoop, get rid of that. That's what I mean here that the current market order is on the opposite side of the market maker's quote. So, you know, I think where a lot of people get hung up is they look at this and say, well, gee, I thought I had this down. So we're not talking about market orders, we're talking about limit order protection. So is it a market order is kind of straightforward. Let's just clear the slide here. You know what, uh, I'm dating myself, but back in the day, uh, NASDAQ had some problems. They had a class action lawsuit fired by a guy named Mr. Manning. In fact, some of us call this, excuse me, uh, call these the Manning rules. And yeah, Mr. Manning is the guy who filed the class action lawsuit on market makers. You know, and my favorite chairman of the SEC is a uh, former chairman, is Chairman Levitt. He has a memoir called Taking on the Street. And he says, you know, market makers make uh, hundreds of thousands or billions of dollars less than they did before of his reforms. And that's what we're talking about here. Okay, so we are again, I'm the Merrill Lynch Series 57. I'm willing to buy uh, XYZ into my inventory at 15. I'm willing to sell it out of my inventory at 16. And I'm good for 10 round lots, round lots 100 shares, 1,000 either side. So now what happens is I have a customer who gives me a limit order. And that's what we're talking about. And this is where a lot of people get hung up. Now I have no obligation, by the way. So now the customer doesn't want to use a market order. He doesn't want immediate execution at the best available price. He wants his price or better. So let's talk about first, let's put that in here. Let's talk about customer who wants to put in a uh, buy order. Now, when the customer has a limit order, He's going to be on the same side as the market maker now. That's what I mean over here. He's, he's on this side now. And sometimes we call this the uh, display rule. Because, you know, I may not have to display the customer's order. 
I mean, if he tells me he wants to buy it at fourteen ninety five, I say, well, I'm sorry, but uh, you know that's not a competitive order right now. You know what to ha used to happen in the past in terms of shenanigans is the customers, Mr. Manning, would tell me he'd want to buy it at fifteen oh five, and uh, you know I wouldn't update my display, I wouldn't fill them, I'd wait till I bought it for me at fifteen, and then my inventory and sell it at fifteen oh five. It uh, beats working for a living. So let's say now the customer gives me a buy limit and his price is the same as mine or better. The same as mine or better. So now the customer says he wants to buy at 15 or less. There's always a buy better. And uh, let's just say this is a uh, thousand shares. So customer buy limit, 1,000 shares at 15. So now I say, hmm, he wants to buy it at 15, and I want to buy it at 15. And so what I have to do now is I have to display the customer's order. And so what I'm going to have to do here is, now outside looking in, it kind of looks like, I'm going to erase here, I need to erase because I got chained to my sides here. Um, Outside looking in, it looks like what Dean wants to do now is buy uh, 20 shares or 20 round lives, excuse me, 2,000 shares into my inventory at uh, 15. And that is not what's going on here. Now I want to buy 1,000 shares for me. Remember, that was what it looked like. I'm updating my display here. In fact, that would be the test issue, right? What would be the update of my display? You know, the easiest thing would be to fill the order. We don't ask about that, but I mean, you know, I don't have, there's a lot of things I could do besides this, but the test issue is update my display. And so now I update my display to the marketplace saying, uh, I want to buy 2,000 shares at 15. It's not the marketplace's business about, you know, the market center that 1,000 is the limit order protection of 1,000 me. I just have to make sure now it's 2,000. Now, very important is a test issue. Very important is a test issue. My minimum obligation, my best practice, be careful not best practice, my minimum obligation, is if for uh, now I pick up, for example, I uh, buy 800 shares. Let's put, uh, let me get my annotation tool out. And let me get a different color here. Uh, Market Baker buys 800 shares. So 400 for Mr. Manning and 400 shares for me. So my minimum obligation is whatever I do for me, I have to do for uh, the customer as well. So now my new display, assuming I, you know, I don't have to adjust it all the way if I don't want to, but now that would show a 12. You know, this would go, let me give up my racer, 400 shares for Mr. Manning, 400 shares for me, the market maker. And, and now this is what this looks like. Yeah. Uh, remember now, uh, another test issue is, do I still have a remaining obligation on the remaining uh, 600 shares? How's Dean getting 600? Remember, Mr. Manning gave me an order to buy 1,000. I gave him 400. So there's 600 remaining. And I still have that same obligation uh, moving forward. So now I'm just adjusting based on the 800 shares we just bought, 400 in, into my inventory and 400 for Mr. Manning under limit order protection rules. Uh, one other testable issue, if I buy this at the, instead of 800 shares at 15, so we said this was at 800 shares at 15. Uh, if I get lucky and get that at 14.95, let's say, you know, so instead of buying 800 shares at uh, 15, we buy 100 shares at 14.99. Uh, the customer will get 400 shares at 14.99, and 400 shares into my inventory if we, you know, get some price improvement. So that's what we mean by the buy limit. It's uh, a limit order. Customer limit order is going to be the other side. Now, please note too, I don't have to tell you this is a buy limit on the test. You know, if they just say customer buy puts in an order to buy at 15, it's your job. You know, that's a buy limit. If you need to review, you know, market orders and limit orders, I, I highly recommend you do so.
All right, so let's uh, clean up. Let's go to the other side and then we'll, we'll call it a day on it. So let's clear all the drawings here. Let's clear the slides. Okay, so as you recall, uh, I am a uh, Series 57 in Merrill. We're a market maker in the security. And we said my quote is 15, 16. And we said it's 10 by 10. And we said if the customer is going to give me a market order uh, to sell, he's going to sell the bid. But if the customer gives me a limit order, if the customer gives me a limit order, I might have a uh, obligation under limit order protection rules, manning rules. And so let's get our annotation tool. And so now here's what I'm trying to, uh, and again, this is one of the things people get hung up on. And so again, I've made a little note here on the bottom, right? Customer market orders are executed on the opposite side of the market maker's quote, but customer limit orders share the same side of the market maker's quote. And then I have what's called the display rule. I wouldn't have to display this order if you told me you wanted to sell it at, uh, you know, 1605. I'd say, well, Mr. Manning, your order isn't competitive. I'm willing to sell it at 16 and you're at 1605. And so that's why I did not display your order. But if the customer wants to, you know, sell at my price or better, what we mean by that is the customer wants to sell at 16 or less, you know, for example, $15.99, I'd have an obligation to display that to the marketplace. There are other things I could do and still fulfill my limit order protection rules, but we're basically just talking here about, you know, the uh, basic uh, form of the test issue here. So uh, let's say the customer says, Dean, I'd like to put in a sell limit, customer sell limit. So Merrill's customer says they want to sell 800 shares at 16. And I say, damn you, you know, you want to sell uh, at 800 shares at 16, and so do I. And so that means you're now on the same side of the market as me. And now I'm going to have to update my quote. I have a you know, display rule here. Let me get out my eraser. Now, why don't you tell me what you think uh, I'm going to put into that as my updated display? So I was willing to sell 1,000 shares out of my inventory at 16, but now I'm willing to sell 1,800 shares. 1,000 for me and 800 for Mr. Man. So now it's gonna be on my new display, it looks like 15, 16, 10 by eight. That's called the 10 by 18, that's the size of my quote. Same deal, uh, test takers. You know, if I uh, get uh, 400 shares for me, 200 shares from Mr. Manning, and 200 shares for me in the inventory. And I could reduce that to 14. And I still have limit order protection still applies. If I get lucky and I get some price improvement, you know, I like to get it at 15.99. Again, whatever I do for me, I'm gonna have to do for that customer. Uh, again, the, the test issue is going to be what are your obligations? So hopefully this gives you a nice overview of limit order protection. And then what you need to do based on uh, this little uh, presentation is practice drill and rehearse. Got to do a lot of practice questions. Uh, just to make sure you get clear about you know, what happens. I think the biggest takeaway is to make sure your, uh, your head is straight on the quote and from whose perspective it is. And that you, when you're doing questions, you're paying attention to whether the customer gave us a market order, in which case that's pretty straightforward. And trying to get, get the quote right from the, uh, the right perspective. What I mean by that is, you know, uh, inside looking out is what I mean by that. And then if it's a specified price, it goes there. All right, let me just clear this up uh, one more time. And, well, I don't think I need to oh, clean it up. I, what I guess I, the note I would make is, uh, let me just stay here. Uh, I'm gonna put, Customer market order to sell. And then down here, I'm going to put 
customer limit order to buy. You know, that depends on where you're going to be in terms of that quote, right? And then maybe over here, let me get a different color. Uh, this is a customer market order to buy. And this is the customer limit order to sell. Uh, to sell. Okay, so again, uh, I hope you uh, found this helpful. If so, smash that like button. And again, I would probably do the next one would logically be to do this same kind of a thing as a series 57, entering, a, you know, getting ready to update my quote on the level three NASDAQ to feed to go over the issue of luck and cross market. So if you'd like to see that, uh, just let me know in the comment box. And I'll try and get that up. Uh, good news, the channel is over 350,000 views, close to 5,000 subscribers. And most of the content for SIEs, please uh, refer your SIEs to the channels, has been built out. Uh, almost all the Series 7 has built out. I mean, we'll still add, but there's, I won't be revisiting that content for a while because there's plenty of content there for SIE Series 7. Uh, the 65 and 66 is almost completely built out. And that means uh, 24s and 57s and 3s and 9s and 10s is that we can start to build out the content for the rest of the channel for the various uh, series, series. So thank for your uh, viewership and your subscription, and I'll see you for our next installment in the 2457 uh, playlist.